Hello, and welcome back to the Art History Channel. Hopefully you're finding all of these videos a little bit extra helpful for you in going through and learning how to talk about art. So welcome back to the Art History Channel. Today we'll be talking about the elements of art. So without further ado, let's get right to it. The most common six elements of art that you'll find in any art history course or online will be line, shape, form, color, space, and texture. Please note that I have added videos to the video playlist, the art history video playlist, um, that go over specifically each one of these in more detail. Please check those out if you haven't already. All right, so let's move my face a little bit here. The elements of art are artistic stylistic features, or sorry, are stylistic features that are included within an art piece to help the artist communicate. The elements of art are also the building blocks used by artists to create a work of art. Knowing the elements of art also allows you to analyze, appreciate, write about, and discuss art. Think of it this way. Leonardo da Vinci didn't just pick up a paintbrush and automatically paint the Mona Lisa. That's not what happened. Leonardo da Vinci had to first learn about the rules of art, the elements of art. He then had to apply those rules to creating an art piece with meaning. And this is also then where the principles come in afterwards, learning about the elements. So first, da Vinci followed the rules. And then da Vinci was able to create the Mona Lisa. Line. So first we have line, the most basic and simple, right? The most basic visual element. Every artwork begins with a line. When you think about it, every single writing begins with a line as well. These can be used to define shapes and figures, but can also indicate motion, emotion, and other elements. There are many ways to create lines and many different types of lines such as hatching, cross-hatching, dots, contour lines, implied lines, and many, many more. Here are just a few examples of different types of line. You can see that in an artwork can be created from any one of these types of lines. Shape are built from lines. These shapes are all built from lines. They are two-dimensional two and flat. They can be organic or geometric and have a name, such as square, circle, triangle, and others. Forms then turn three-dimensional. These are built from shapes. As I said, they're three-dimensional and take up physical space. They can be organic, such as clouds, or geometric, again, and have names, such as cubes, spheres, pyramids, and others. Color. Move my face out of the way. Used in art to duplicate reality, set moods, and highlight importance. There are three different properties of color. The first is hue, which is the actual name of the color. Blue, red, green, yellow, orange, brown, etc. The other is intensity, also known as saturation, or how bright or dull a color is. And the last of these three properties is value, the lightness or darkness of a color. There are primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Most of the colors that you will find in a Crayola crayon box will be tertiary colors. There are also different color schemes, for example, complementary and analogous. There are also different types of colors, such as warm and cool. Here is an example of the six color schemes, monochromatic, which is using only one color in all of the different shades and tones of that color. There's analogous, complementary, triadic, split complementary, and tetradic. And then here is a, a simple color wheel showing you the most basic 
primary, secondary, and tertiary colors that exist. Space. This refers to the distances or areas around, between, and within components of an artwork. Spaced is used, space is used to refer both to depth, real or represented, and also the general surface area within a work of art. Some periods of art history show a great deal of interest in creating convincing illusions of three-dimensional space in two-dimensional media, such as drawings and paintings. This, think about when um, linear perspective was discovered, right? And every all of the artwork turned into creating as big an open space as possible on one piece of flat paper, right? So then you have vanishing points that go all the way back into the space and other ways of showing space within an artwork. Positive space refers to the subject or areas of interest in an artwork. Negative space then refers to the background or the area that surrounds the subject of the work. Linear perspective is based on the optical illusion that parallel lines seem to converge as they recede, get further back, into the distance. Railroad tracks are often the classic example. Also, looking down a long highway, just a single road, is another classic example. Atmospheric perspective is based on the optical effect that makes objects in the distance appear paler, bluer, and less detailed than objects that are close to us. Here are some examples of that. Here, on the left, we have linear space. Linear space is what we were just talking about. All the way on the right, we have atmospheric space, where things in the back are paler and less detailed. And then up at the top, we have the most basic discussion about space between positive and negative. The next one we have is texture. Texture is the feeling of a surface, real or represented. This might refer to the roughness or smoothness of actual objects and art media, or to the illusion of these properties. So, let's break that down real quickly. Might refer to the roughness or smoothness of actual objects. There you'll see at the bottom of the screen an artwork example that shows actual an actual object right an actual physical object that is not a painting that is not a drawing that is a teacup spoon and saucer covered in fur right that's all it is just a little small sculpture is what it would be so it's an actual object so texture refers to the roughness or smoothness of that actual object or to the illusion of these properties and that would be in a painting or drawing or even a photograph, anything like that, where you see something at the top of the screen, right, where it shows the examples of different textures with lines, by the way, made up of lines. But it shows the examples of different textures and what those might look like in a 2D surface. That's all I've got for the elements of art. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep these videos quick, short, nice and sweet to keep your attention and it'll just be about short little things that we need to talk about in order to get you talking about art and art history in the correct way rather than just using all of your everyday known terms there are actual terms that you should be using in your writing and talking when you're talking art history all right so let's make sure to start using some of these elements start using that vocabulary it's all throughout this 10 minute video nine minute video, however long it might end up being. But thank you. I look forward to seeing you again for the next one. Alrighty. Have a good one. Bye-bye.